Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. What fun things are we going to get into today? Here we have 2011 Beached Whale Nissan Titan V8. As you can see, it looks a little rough and it's been sitting for quite a while. Towed in from out of state in Maryland. So let's read the customer complaint see what was already done to the truck and then see what we're going to do about it. So this is all I got in the appointment form. Detailed description of problem in history. Clark crank no start. Replaced IPDM. Flag one check ECU okay still no start. Does that sound like a detailed description of the problems to you? So I knew there was more to the story so I emailed the owner back and forth uh, asking him What's the history of the truck? Well, he said it's been down for a year. Uh, something to do with the engine computer not communicating. So, he said he's a handyman. He wanted to try to fix it himself. Did some research online. He watches my channel. Um, so first thing, I think he got a replacement engine computer from a junkyard or online somewhere and took it to the shop to get it programmed. The truck started up and ran, but then it was in this limp home mode, setting codes for the throttle body and the accelerator pedal. So then he replaced the accelerator pedal position the sensor, or the whole pedal assembly, with supposedly OEM. Then he replaced the throttle body with, uh, he said, Amazon. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound promising. Then we replaced the whole fuse box, IPDM, with a junkyard unit. Truck still had problems, or he went back to a no-com. Then he went on JustAnswer.com, and they apparently told him to cut some wires to restore the 5-volt reference. It, this is all what he said. So let's start from scratch, take a peek under the hood, <laughs> scan this thing for code, see if any of the modules are online and see what we're up against. So first things first, last night I tried to even crank this thing, it was at 8 volts, the battery was completely drained. So overnight I had it charging and you can see it put 60 amp hours into this battery. 13.5 volts, I just opened the door so it's fully charged. It looks like a fresh battery here, so at least we have good battery voltage now. Well, I mean, let's see what happens when we turn the key. So apparently there's a ghost behind the dash. Let's just uh, see key off, key on. Something to do with the climate control, I think. Let's try again. So you see the four-wheel drive indicator disappears. Check engine lights on. Let's crank it. Well, it cranks super fast. Uh, that sounds like it cranks really fast, but okay. Um, let's try to communicate. So I tried to automatically search in the Nissan menu, and it asks you to input the VIN. That's a red flag that the engine computer is offline. So let me input the VIN, try to do a full code scan. And by the way, <laughs> the customer right off the bat said, I've invested too much parts and money into this truck, can you give me a discount? We'll see. All right, so full code scan. We have some modules that are online. I'm guessing the ones that are supposed to be here. And this climate control is driving me nuts. Just wanted to stop making that noise. Um, anyways, ECM and TCM are offline. So I scanned it yesterday and the TCM was online. So, you know, there, the, there's definitely communication codes like the U1000, that's the Nissan Classic. Battery voltage out of range. K 
can com circuit can com circuit so can com circuit engine speed so let me clear all these out and I'm going to rescan it and I I don't know why the TCM is now offline okay so we'll back out and smart scan again so we'll start with the ECM can't read that can read ABS instrument cluster BCM airbags and that's the smart fuse box right there the IPDM but the engine controller is definitely MIA okay second code scan is done TCM this is definitely offline. Okay. That was not the case yesterday. Um, we can see that in the diagnostic report. Let's see here. Titan right here. Let me open that up. Transmission, CanCom circuit, TP sensor. Okay, let's take a peek under the hood and see what we're up against. Okay, under the hood, here is how the truck showed up. The owner said he also unplugged every single sensor he could find. There's the Amazon throttle body. There's the fuse box. Here's the engine computer, and here are the cut wires that JustAnswer.com told him to just you just cut wires. Yeah, I think he cut six wires going apparently to five volt circuits. Wow. So my approach to this truck is going to be close my eyes, print out a wiring diagram, and check powers and grounds to this ECM. We want to get this computer online first and foremost, and then deal with uh, the butchery later. All right, so I did some research online on all data and printed off a few diagrams. I want, I'm interested in powers and grounds to this engine computer. So in red, I marked battery power. There's an ECM relay, and here is the engine computer. This is, you know, page one, and the pins, for example, this is battery power. This is ignition power. These two powers come from the ECM relay, and then this orange uh, marked wire, pin 111, is the ECM relay control. So how does the engine computer typically work? Well, it has constant battery power here all the time, keep alive memory. And then, when it sees power on the ignition switch input, ignition switch on or start, it'll ground the control wire for the ECM relay, which is on this page. So the computer grounds this, ECM relay clicks on, sends power on this tree, on A, and then the computer gets powered up on these other circuits. So we have one, two, at least two powers to check. Battery power and ignition switch power. That's key. And then we'll see if, if we have those two We'll see if the ECM is being turned on. We can measure voltage on here. We can even pull that down with a test light, see if the relay turns on, if these two come online, 119 and 120. And then we want to check the grounds. So this computer has three grounds on pins 1, 115, and 116. Okay, so pretty straightforward so far. And where are these pins located? Well, the engine computer has two connectors. And Nissan does it this way. On connector F54, this first connector is 63 or 81 pins. Okay, and all the pins are laid out right here. So we're just interested in pin one ground. That's one of these fatter pins. Then the second connector, connector e, uh, E16, is going to be pins 82 through 121. 
And here we have the communication wires and the ignition power, ECM relay control, then constant battery power down here, those other two grounds, and the output from the ECM relay. So we know exactly which pins to go for. Let's unplug the engine computer and start with our basic checks. So we can check the grounds first, that's easy to do. There's three of them, and then we'll go for the powers. So the engine computer is very close to the main positive battery terminal. So if we start swinging this around and it touches the positive terminal, bad things could happen. Sparks, it could ground through the computer to those wires. We don't want to do that. Hopefully the owner didn't do that already. I don't see any burn marks. <laughs> but let's tape this up so we don't accidentally touch it, unplug it, and go to town on checking those pins. So, cut the engine computer off, there's the junkyard markings, and all the pins look straight at least, so that's a good thing. Now, the connectors are a complete disaster. Uh, they are broken, the sliders are out, they're just hanging out. We have at least six cut wires apparently, here and here, it's completely ridiculous. I mean, we got some tape. But let's uh, just follow the diagram and first check power. So we need pins 115, 116, and on the first connector is going to be number one, ground, black wire, one of the fatter pins. So it's going to be this one is number one. And you can always go by wiring color sequence. So on the first connector, if you're, if you're not sure, you know, these one, two, three, four, five, for example, two is going to be light green and black. So that's one, two is light green and black, yes. So let's check that ground first. Okay, so test light from battery positive. If it finds a ground, it'll light up, and it does. So pin one. Yes, test light does light up. Okay, great. <laughs> First pin checked. Now let's check pins 115 and 116. They're both um, black and white and black on the second connector. Okay. Yep, black and white and black. So black is good, white and black is good. Okay, great. So all grounds check out just fine. Okay, so I have the key on. Let's check the powers. First is going to be pin 121, white wire. So now the test light's connected to battery ground, and if, I, if it finds a positive, it'll light up. White wire. Yes, nice bright test light. Okay, let me check that one off. Next is ignition key power on pin 109, which is a blue and white. So it's going to be in the same row is 121 and that's is that the one that's all messed up and taped up it sure looks like it okay one two three four you can see a lot of frustration here people yes that wire is is hot now i want to make sure it's a hundred percent one two three four Looks like that pin's been spread out. Let me get a needle probe for this. All right, so I got my test light set at four amps. I want a really low test these powers and grounds. So if I find a power, four amps, super bright test light. So let me check number one again. That's the constant battery. Yes. Let me check the ignition power source. Yes, as good drag. So, so far, so good. Ignition power, we have battery power. Now let's move on to relay control. So right next door is going to be an orange wire, two pins down, and that should be the relay control. Now let me put my test light on the relay output, which is pins uh, 119 and 120, these brown wires. So let me stick this in here. And then, we can use a small test light to pull down 
the uh, relay control wire and see if that clicks. All right, we got all the test lights now. So little baby test light to ground. If it finds a power, it'll light up. But we want to use this to pull down that relay control wire. That's going to be one, two, three, four. So that this is going to be the power. Five, six. Yep, ECM relay clicks. So the computer should be able to pull down, energize that ECM relay, and we have good power feeds when that relay is energized. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me keep that in there and check both ECM powers. Yep, they're good. Does that mean we have a bad engine computer? Sure is looking like it. <laughs> so, what do you expect? I mean, you know, the owner said that when the computer was replaced for the first time, the truck did start and run, but it was in limp mode. So what does that tell you? I'm thinking that junkyard computer was bad. And he, the, I asked him, please bring all your original parts. Can't find the engine computer. Uh, you can't find the OEM throttle body or the pedal or anything. But right now it's looking like a bad engine computer. Bad junkyard engine computer. Completely dead in the water. Will not turn on the ECM relay with you know a good ignition key input. So that was pretty simple. Pretty simple check. Powers, grounds, everything's energized, the relay works. Computer is just refusing to turn that relay on. So and now his wiring harness is destroyed because of justanswer.com. Oh man. Um, so we're gonna have to look for another engine computer. You know, I've talked to the owner. We're kind of at a dead end, you know, half an hour into this diagnosis. Um, so I plugged the engine computer in more securely because those, obviously, the connectors are all busted. And they were kind of loose in there. So let, let's just see what happens. Key on. What the heck was that? That's it. Our battery's disconnected now. What the heck? Yeah, the uh, negative battery terminal is loose. <laughs> of course, because this truck was disassembled and not reassembled. Let's try again. I heard the fuel pump kick on. The security light isn't on. Wow. Okay. That seems promising. Let me rescan it again. I'm sure we have a bazillion codes because everything's unplugged. But the main problem here is the engine computer wasn't plugged in all the way because the com connectors are completely destroyed. All right, so look, auto ID actually um, ID the vehicle 2011. Yep. Now the VIN does not match because this computer is from another vehicle. So I don't know if we can rewrite the VIN on this particular model, but let's jump in here, do a full code scan again, see if the TCM came back online. Yep, there's the ECM. We got eight things unhooked. Um, probably six of those are the cut wires. Uh, let me do a full code scan, save that. Then we'll see if we can get this truck to run and go from there. 